Welcome to Lent 2024. Lauren Isley was a philosopher, educator, and natural science writer who often spent the early morning hours walking the beach. Each day at sunrise, he found people combing the sand for starfish that had washed ashore during the night to kill them for commercial purposes. It was to him a sign, however small, of all the ways the world says no to life. But one morning, he got up unusually early and discovered a solitary figure on the beach. This person was also gathering starfish, but every time she found one alive, she'd pick it up and throw it as far as she could back into the ocean. Isley found her on her the mission of mercy every morning, seven days a week, no matter the weather. He named her the Star Thrower because her pre-dawn work contradicted everything he had been taught about evolution and survival of the fittest. Here, on the beach in Costable, the strong reached down to save, not crush the weak. And Isley wondered, is there a star thrower at work in the universe? A God whose nature is mercy within mercy within mercy? When I read that question, I yelled out, yes! Yes, there is a star thrower at work in the universe. I know it and I believe it. The story offers an image of how ordinary people like you and I can participate in God's extravagant mercy, even in small ways. Being a star thrower is something we all can do on our own inward way of the cross. We can recognize, identify, and lift up those moments, those acts, those people, those stories that contradict the many ways that the world says no to life. We can be star throwers together. These contradictions can lead to transformation when we grapple with and identify their deeper reality. When we live in such a way as to make that deeper reality of God come alive. The reality of God that is mercy within mercy within mercy. Palmer says, The world is full of unlove, but if you have once been loved, you can live in the power of that moment and make it multiply. And I ask, is this not our call as Christians and as a planetary community to make love multiply and to embody the very nature of God who is communion? Can we embrace the Christic call to nurture love and communion wherever we go and with whomever we're with? If we do, we're taking a radical stance toward life and engaging with the world in a bold and countercultural way. During Lent and Holy Week, we hear stories of paradox and come face to face with the cross. We witness Christ's unwavering love and courage in the face of evil, and we hear a resounding yes to mercy and communion as surrender, suffering, and death are shattered by the power of love. Living the contradictions can reveal deeper truths of how we are called, who we hope to be, and how, with God's heart, we will be led to love and serve the world. As star throwers, we are empowered to use our strength, not for crushing the weak, but for lifting up and saving the weak, whether the weak is another person, a community, our suffering world, or a devastated planet. By living this call, we emulate our star thrower God who continues the work of compassion in the universe through us. So I pray to live as a star thrower this Lent. What about you? Could you be a star thrower, a hope sower, a love grower? Many have stood at the shoreline of history, stood against the surf and tide and against all futility to reach down to a firm life, no matter how small and no matter how insignificant its form. By standing in that feudal place, they contradicted the course of social evolution, just as that solitary star thrower once did. You and I can do the same. We can participate in the hope and power of Christ and be emboldened by the cross just as they were. And so, with belief in the one who calls us to make this Lenten journey, let's commit to throwing stars of mercy, hope, and love together. And let's do so with intention and wild abandon, 
flooding the darkness with our collective starlight. And let us shine for all the world to see. May your Lent be blessed and happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>